When I was a young girl in North Korea, I woke up one night choking on thick black smoke. Outside, my parents screamed at me and my brother to get out of our home as it was consumed by a big fire. Outside, as my brother and I continued to choking, our father didn't check to see if we were okay. But instead, he immediately ran back inside and risked his life to rescue our most important positions. Pictures of two dictators, which are required to hang in every home. If he failed to save them, he would have been punished. But he was praised, not for risking his children, but saving for the images of our dear leaders. Nobody, including myself, thought this was strange, nor was it strange to see that the government officials with white gloves would come to every home and check for dust on pictures of these poor dear leaders. But after escaping the country, I realized that these are only small examples of how North Koreans are tragically oppressed and brainwashed. Now that I'm free, uh, despite the risks, my personal safety, I feel a strong obligation to tell the world about the, North, the shocking Orwellian nightmare that North Korean people face. One of the most important thing that we have to learn is that we have to learn that we can't trust anyone <coughs> because classmates, friends, and coworkers are forced to, to report each other and spy on each other. So my mom trained me since I was young to not, not to say anything bad about the government or the system because someone will hear you. The words have ears and the fears have eyes, she said. One of my classmates learned this the hard way. After he invited a boy to his home, his friend reported to the teacher that he saw so many nice things inside suddenly. So the government officers soon found out that one of the family members escaped the country and was sending money. So the families were arrested as traitors. But also speaking against the regime is also unthinkable because one of my friend's father said simply to his best friend, this system is unfair. After that, the whole family disappeared in the middle of the night. There, one of the many family members was sent to a political prison camp where over 100,000 people are suffering in forced labor, tortured, and death. The dear leader taught us to hate them. So I believed the people in political prison camp and publicly executed uh, deserve to be punished, that they are traitors. And I didn't know that many offenses in public execution are insane, like um, killing a cow, practicing religion, making contact with the South Koreans, and even watching for media. I also didn't know it's wrong, wrong for young children to watch public executions, because we are forced to watch public execution. I saw first one at AZ7. As I watched a man hanging by his neck under a railroad bridge, I also saw the other public execution during the famine when the authorities shot a man in his head in front of his family. But we didn't say a word. We wouldn't even question about our dear leader. 
not not only to the fear, but also we really believed the dear little was a god who performed the miracles to protect us from the Japanese imperialists, to kill the enemies. He crossed a river by flooring on tree leaves and created bombs from pine cones and many unbelievable feats. So, <laughs> due to the hate and hate and fear and oppression, the North Korean people can't develop themselves. Also, North Korea is the only country in the world where almost nobody can access the internet or even understands what it means. Also, the dear leader taught us to hate Americans because uh, uh, we learned that America, they are the most horrible human being. They taught us that who Americans are taught tortured North Koreans severely, so we considered them to kill off. We didn't consider them as a human being. So we were eagerly practiced to kill these Yankee bastards. And I saw pictures around the country about Americans, Japanese, and South Korean soldiers who were being stabbed for the children. And then we sang songs like shooting Yankee bastards. But for us, it's normal. Due to fear and oppression that North Korean people cannot develop themselves and that we even didn't know, you know what's, what's internet or we didn't even understand what it means but also, we are also in this world for average citizens. Because in North it's, it's illegal for average citizens to start business or trade freely. And the regime has to suppress development uh, to maintain dominance over the people who only hope to succeed through their devotions to all their leader. So perhaps uh, one of the most disgusting examples of this manipulation is the dictator's pleasure group. Young girls from all around the country are recruited from school to serve our dear leader as the government officials inspect them like animals. So the every girls, every girl on these girls are measured, including legs, waist, breast, and even nipples. Uh, one of my friend's sister was very beautiful, and then she was uh, dreamed to be selected to serve in the pleasure group. And she passed uh, first rounds, but every time, in the end, she was fed because of her height. So her mom fed her tons of beans to make her grow taller. But of course, it never worked. <coughs> and she was devastated and sick of beans. But actually, she was very lucky because after the chosen girls are taken from their hometown to serve our dear leader and the regime, and many learned the horrifying reality. Actually, they are forced into sexual slavery. Fortunately, I wasn't pretty enough to be selected, so I had my own dreams. So did my family who earned money secretly by smuggling goods from China. And they survived the big famine, which has killed more than a million people. And my family thought their life was pretty good. But after escaping North Korea, I knew that they deserved much better. So convincing them to leave the country and follow me to freedom was very difficult. My family had to leave behind everything and my mom also lost her seven close brothers and sisters, who she still cries for every night. I feel so guilty to tearing them apart, but I was also so depressed without them. This is an unthinkable choice that North Korean defectors have to fo are forced to make. Family or freedom? Why can't we have both? 
talking about my family was the most difficult part of writing my memoir because uh, I had to reopen my deep emotional scars that all long agonizing separation. While I was living in China, I cried countless nights and I staring at the moon. And I hoped my mom would look at the moon at the same time. And I would talk to the moon as my way of talking with my mom. So still, whenever I see the moon, it reminds me of the many depressing years that I couldn't see my family. Many people around the world might take their time with family for granted. But for North Korean defectors, <coughs> you are painfully aware of how precious the time is together. Many people who read my book often ask me, if you could take a time machine to age 17, when you are about to cross the river, the frozen river alone, would you do it again? I could not. Eventually, I found real freedom in my life, but I paid the biggest price, leaving behind everything, everyone I loved and 17 years of memory. I still could sacrifice myself to find freedom, but I could never risk again the long separation with my family or see them in such pain. After surviving numerous encounters with the Chinese police in China and my family's imprisonment in Laos, we were finally united in South Korea in 2010. Thousands of North Koreans who are sick of the oppression fleeing, have been fleeing the country for years, but even after risking their life and making an epic journey to freedom, they still have faced many problems like loneliness, prejudice, and depression. Others have been assassinated and hunted by a North Korean agent, and a stunning number of defectors are committing suicide. North Korean defectors are hopelessly heartbroken because we are cut off from our loved ones forever, blocked and tormented by an inhuman regime. We cry for our homeland. Many millions, as millions of North Koreans are continuing to suffer in this darkness of strange and cruel system implemented by the North Korean government regime. What are they so afraid of? Why shouldn't people be able to come and go to meet people whenever they want? Keeping families, friends divided is unforgivable. If Kim Jong-un really wants to show to the world that he can change, the first step is to remove travel restrictions so that people can travel outside and interact with the international community and defectors like me we can visit our homeland. Nobody has a right to prevent this from happening. To end this injustice, the first crucial step is to tell the world the truth about North Korea. Thanks to people like you who listen to our story, and we've been making a lot of progress in recent years, but a surprise, but still a surprising number of people tell me, I knew about the nuclear weapons, and the strange dictator, but I didn't realize how North Koreans are horribly suffering even today. So that's why I keep asking you to share our truth about my homeland until nobody can say, I didn't know. Once the world fully awakens, I believe we will have the power to end this modern day tragedy. Thank you for listening. Also, it's a powerful story, and I do think people should read your book, The Girl with Seven Names. Um, but it's also quite a brave position you're taking in telling that story, because it's not very convenient for the regime. So how much do you worry about yourself being exposed? 
Um, the threatening from North Korean regime is started from 2013 after my TED speech, and then, but that's why when I was writing my memoir, I'm just worried about that by writing this book, I don't want to certainly kill my family members inside North Korea because of my activists. So I just did my best to prevent, to protect their identities in the book, and then blocking my family's face. Actually, so I got the threatening messages about the North Korean regime from the South Korean government uh, last month. So, but I mean, so what, what can I do? Do I need to sit at home and they do nothing while the regime commits horrible human rights offices? So I will keep going about what I'm doing right now to fight until the re to make the regime fair. But I only hope I'm more worried about the, my fam relative security than myself. So just, uh, just only I can just pray for their safety. That's all my, all, all I want. And do you have, do you have any optimism that there'll be change in North Korea? Of course, that's why I'm doing this work. How long is it going to take? I'm not fortune teller. <laughs> so obviously, I can knew about the answer, but. I strongly believe that we will see the unification like what German had. Because uh, North Korean people uh, suffered and brainwashed <coughs> for seven decades until today. And then in the history, it's proved that dictators can't last forever. And then we suffered for seven decades. And then what Kim Jong-un, the young dictator, what he's showing these days, it proves that he's in unstable situations. And then killing so many, you know, higher-ranking officials. Not only he killed his own uncles, but he's killing so many people than his father Kim Jong Il did. So it proves that his power is weakening right now. And the the, the, the more important thing is the North Korean people right now they are slowly awakening because uh, we were seriously brainwashed people in this world. But right now, from around from started around the ten years before that, at least they knew that. North Korea is not the best country, it's not paradise. So, which is people more, but still people can't talk about in publicly because we have public executions and people disappearing to the political prison camp. But the people around Kim Jong, Kim Il-sung, from his circle will make a change. I strongly believe it. But so the new government were at least, you know, were willing to talk with international community or bring a change in the end. So without people like you, Shansul, telling those stories, it's going to be harder. So thank you for your bravery. Thank you so much.